When you think of houses made of straw, you may think of a big bad wolf. But in Moab, Utah, an organization is taking an organic industrial byproduct and turning it into sustainable, affordable housing. My World 2 field reporter Kyle Stanley went out west to learn more. My name is Emily Niehaus. I am the founder of Community Rebuilds. So this was all my big idea. <laughs> So back in 2003, I was um, actually a loan officer for a local credit union, and I was giving loans to people to build and buy housing. And what I found was that there was a lack of affordable housing in Moab, and there was a lack of people building affordable housing. And um, I had friends in town that were doing this thing called natural building. And I said to them, well, if you're building with dirt and uh, straw, which is an agricultural byproduct, um, it's got to be dirt cheap housing, right? And I'm looking for affordable housing for the people that are trying to live and work here in Moab. And they said, well, yeah, it's, it is. It's dirt cheap housing, but um, not a lot of people know how to build it. So my idea was to cobble together this idea of combining a habitat for humanity like volunteer based uh, workforce and this housing typology straw bale construction to try to see if a program could address affordable housing. The cool thing about straw is that it is a renewable resource. And so when we think of building products, um, wood is something we use all the time, but we don't grow pink insulation. We manufacture it, and a lot of temp chemicals and toxicity goes into that process. Straw grows and then blooms the grains that we harvest, and then what's left is the stalk of the plant. And so we're just basically stacking the stalks and bundling them together and then building them, using them as our bricks. There's two different ways to stack straw bale. You can either go flat or on edge. We're going on edge, so it makes them 14 inches. So we end up with a 14-inch wall. Can you tell us a little bit about the plastering process? What do you guys use? Um, we start with a earthen plaster, which is essentially sand, clay, some straw. It's just like cooking. You have to have the right ratios of stuff like that. And uh, on the exterior, we follow it up with a lime plaster, which is a, just a little bit more durable um, in the weather. And we use a finer kind of earthen plaster on the inside. We're like a hybrid of traditional kind of building techniques as well as alternative natural building techniques as well. In the effort to build affordable housing, what we find the largest expense on a budget sheet is labor. And so what the idea of community rebuilds is um, centralized around is the fact that we have young emerging professionals coming from all over the world to come and be student in part of the solution. What we have at the end of our program is not only an affordable home, but we have a group of people that are trained and experienced in this new kind of housing typology in green construction. And so homeowners may someday get into this field and our students actually launch and then become young builders themselves. So I first heard about natural building in a permaculture class that I took in college. And it was fascinated by a different way of building and building with what we have and wanted to get more involved. I'd also, since I was a kid, wanted to learn how to build. Um, and I think that can sometimes be intimidating as a woman to kind of dive into that field. And so this kind of created an amazing combination where I could learn and build and build in a way that felt better to me or in a way that I believed in. Our amazing student interns join us in Moab for four building months and they uh, show up. They don't have to have any building experience and we give them a quick orientation and then we get to work. And they're here with us for the duration and then at the end of those months, um, it's funny, we uh, celebrate a new home being built and new education learned, but then everyone starts crying because they're so sad to leave. I have actually met a lot of alumni of Community Rebuilds Internship Program throughout my life. Um, the CR alum are very far and wide, and everyone is so excited about this program. 
Um, so I looked it up. I originally wanted to be a build intern, but I have a degree in urban planning and they were looking for an urban planner. Um, so it worked out pretty perfectly. Interns from this program actually walk away with the knowledge that ranges from how to use a pneumatic hammer, how to use a power saw, you know, power tools, um, how to frame, how to pour foundation, how to stack straw for insulation, how to plaster interior and exterior that straw to protect it. Um, so they come away from the program really understanding what a foundation to finish uh, of a, the construction of a home looks like, because they've done it. So the raw materials that go into a straw bale home actually pencil out to be less than the materials that go into a conventional home, mostly because the materials are agricultural byproduct or dirt, and a lot of the effort is really labor. Um, when we think about a conventional home, a lot of the materials that go into a conventional home have been manufactured in a plant or have traveled from China. Um, or from another country where they've been manufactured. And so you're dealing with all kinds of expenses like tariffs and um, transportation. The homes that you see getting built behind me here are actually gonna cost half of what conventional construction would cost for these homeowners. Back when I started Community Rebuilds, we had a lot of principles in place. We wanted to build low carbon, modern, natural buildings through a student education program in a way that was gonna help us replicate this type of housing model. We built and we built and we built and almost 40 homes later, we said, we need to prove our concept and we need to prove it in a way that is data driven and science based and measured by somebody other than us. A lot of people know about LEED certification and that's like the 1990s sustainability model of building. It's less bad than conventional. What, what is core to community rebuilds is building better buildings, not building less bad. And so with the Living Building Challenge, because they're so rooted in this idea of regeneration and regenerative design and building practices, I said, that's the metric we want to use. And we were able to tweak just a couple of things and um, actualize living building certification for these homes. Straw bale construction may seem unconventional, but when you drive by or you visit a home that's straw bale construction, it looks and feels very conventional, where the walls are just a little bit thicker. Uh, it almost feels more like a farm home. Uh, but uh, with finishes and designs and especially contemporary architecture and contemporary interior design, a straw bale home can look and feel just like a, every other home on the market. So this home looks a little more on the finished side. Can you tell us a little bit about what these giant tanks are behind us? Um, this is rainwater collection off of the roof. Um, this home has been completed. The homeowners have moved in about three weeks ago. Um, we're just trying to maximize all the natural resources we can with our house, uh, whether it's collecting rainwater off the roof or whether it's the way we orient our houses with a, a passive solar design. So we are taking advantage of how the sunlight is moving through the sky throughout the year. And these homes are pretty groundbreaking in terms of water in Utah. Water is very contentious in the western half of the United States. Um, and so these, these homes are actually collecting their own water from rainfall to use for non-potable uses like flushing toilets and um, urban agriculture. Um, and all of the appliances that are installed are very water efficient. We did a lot of research on that. They also have the first legal residential composting toilets in the state. They feel a lot like a regular toilet, it's still a flush toilet. Um, basically, there's a big box in the utility rooms that the, the waste goes into, as well as some mulch, and you just kind of turn it. And eventually, after a couple of years, that human waste becomes compost that you can use in your garden. So uh, one thing that we do here is a passive solar home. And so we orient all of our homes toward the south um, side so that it collects as much sunlight as possible. And we have what are called bevels on our windows that actually we form them so they slant out and more sunlight comes into the building. Um, we also have eaves on our roof that knock out the sun in the summertime when it's really hot and we want our house to be cooler. And when the sun's lower in the wintertime, it comes in and it actually heats up the adobe floor. We have 
the engineering, and we have the ingenuity in terms of building science. What we don't have is the human capital, the people to be able to deploy that information into communities beyond Moab, Utah. And so my call to action to anybody that is really interested in being part of the solution of being in a regenerative world is do it. Find programs like Community Rebuilds, sign up, learn, work hard. The payoff is amazing. It's not just uh, experience, but it's a portfolio. We need young emerging professionals to not only see themselves as the solution, but to plant themselves in solution-based organizations to get that education and information so that they can be the birds that spread the seeds of change.